Hey there, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the Master Grade V2 Gundam Victory 2 Gundam Verka. So this is the version Kotoki Master Grade for 2015. We got this just right at the very end of 2015 and everyone loves a Verka kit. Everyone knows that Verka kits are usually always very high quality and they come with lots of water slides. That's good. I showed you guys that in the unboxing. For this kit, I haven't put on the water slides because obviously I'm going to keep those for when I actually paint it. Uh, I did put on the foil stickers. There aren't very many, mostly just like on the cameras and the head and then these little red rings around on the side of the legs, the side of the arms, and the side skirt armor. Uh, those are just red foil stickers on there. So yeah, I'm showing to the I'm showing you the kit like this first because this is how you build it in these separate parts. This is how you build it. Uh, then you can choose basically which way you want to go, whether you want to build this into the Gundam or you want to build it into these separate uh, fighters, the top fighter and the bottom fighter. Uh, that would be connecting the leg section to a core fighter and the top section to a core fighter to make the top fighter and uh, leg fighter. I, I'm not going to be making the fighters. If you want to see what those look like, here you go. I'll give you a reminder here in the manual. That's what the top fighter looks like with the top half connected to a core fighter and the leg fighter, the legs connected to a core fighter. Yeah, that's what those are going to look like. I imagine there's probably like two people out there who wanted to see that and they're going to be like, ah, oh, why didn't you show that? But I imagine most of you probably just want to see the Gundam. That's all I personally really care about. So that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, here you can see we have the top section and the bottom section, uh, all with a lot of things missing here. Obviously the core fighter is going to change its shape and fit into the main torso and the head is inside there as well. One thing that I'll show you, just close up, you can see there's our seated pilot figure inside the cockpit. We have this clear canopy piece that hopefully you can see through that glare. The pilot figure is seated inside there. And for the life of me, we have this uh, sort of uh, landing gear set. This is just one clear piece that fits onto here. It fits on there very nicely, but it doesn't. there's no, it's nothing to actually snap into place. The core fighter is just kind of resting on there, but there's so much weight on the back if you see, mine always it always falls back, and I've seen other people have it where it's posed not like that. Here, I'll try to show it to you. Hopefully, you guys can see it okay here. Um, you can see it just just sort of like falling back there, and I'm not sure why. I've tried moving stuff around as best as I can, but it keeps doing that, and both of them. So we do have two core fighters actually, which is nice. Here is the second one. They're exactly the same, but I have actually made them slightly different. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so yeah, you can have one inside the Gundam and then have a second one just sort of like around, flying around or whatever, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I just want to go over some of the accessories before transforming this. Uh, just some of the stuff that you're going to get with this kit. If you want to have the core fighter, either one or both of them attached onto an action base. We have these clear connection pieces and we just have two of these. This is just going to fit onto the back of the core fighter in there like that. Just snaps into place very easy and you can connect the action base onto the back of there and you can have it flying or whatever and you can, I think, move these out a little bit like that if you want, but basically they're just meant to just be uh, straight on like so. Then we do also just have a regular action base connector just for the Gundam which is going to go up just under the crotch like normal. Then if you want to transform it into the top and bottom fighter, uh, for the top fighter you will have to remove the hands and you're going to replace the hands with just these flat parts. I'm trying to get a good grip on these, I can't. Uh, here you're going to replace the hands with just these flat parts because the hands are going to actually like flip up flip up and then back inside of here and then the hand is too big to fit in there so you're just going to have this piece it is going to be like visible from there so you have those pieces those are just uh, to replace the hands for the transformation then while I've got this here uh, inside the elbow here's our beam saber it just pops out of there you can replace this part back on the elbow and fold that back up and then the beam saber handle is going to fit into the hand it has a little peg on there and then we have two, so we have one of these handles in each elbow and then two beam effect parts to use for those if you want to be holding them. Very thin 
beam saber effect part. It's really cool. It's a unique look. We don't often have, you know, usually we just get the same standard one on one one hundred scale size beam saber effect part. So it's cool when we get some different ones. These are like really super thin. They'd be great for uh, a G self if we ever got a master grade of that. We also have this beam fan effect part, which is going to plug into the beam saber just the same as the regular beam saber effect part, and it's just uh, going to be used like that. Not sure about the weight issues for this. I'll see in a minute once we get the kit transformed and I get it posed up on Action Base uh, how it's going to be able to hold this. I saw in Jabman's review for this kit that uh, it has some trouble holding its weapons, so we'll have to see how that goes. Then we have this clear effect part for the shield, beam shield. So again, we're just going to take the elbow off and then pop this part through here and back onto the elbow and then we've got our beam shield which is going to be held on that part. Uh, again, it's, it's kind of annoying having a shield that's held on the back of the arm but that's just the way the v v Victory Gundam and the V2 are designed. So again, I'll show you that again when we get to some poses. Then for the hands, these are going to work similar to the Master Grade wing hands where you're just swapping out the fingers. So we have just these open hands and then we also have closed fists and then weapon holding hands for our different hand options here. Uh, actually a trigger finger and then just like a beam saber holding hands. So we do have a few different options. One thing that I just want to say, uh, this part is the only part that I'm really experiencing so far that's very loose and keeps popping out this connection like the lower arm connects into the, the shoulder part. You can see there's that little gap there that keeps coming loose and I keep having to like snap that back into place but again I'm guessing that's just for the transformation once this thing is actually all transformed together hopefully it should be fine and the last of the accessories I want to go over here is the beam rifle really nice beam rifle really dark color it's a darker gray than the inner frame color so that's kind of nice here in the bottom this part can open up and we have this little missile inside there that part and then we can replace that whole lower part with this uh, grenade launcher part so this is really cool. This is just going to pull off of here. And there we go. Once those parts are switched around, that's what that's going to look like on there. Really cool look for this. Other thing that this gun has, aside from these two green stickers there for the two cameras, we also have more cameras. These side parts are going to pull out. If I can do this carefully, you can see we have one on the left and one on the right. Those are going to pull off to the side like that, having trouble getting it to stay there straight. There you go. The sides of the rifle come off to show uh, another small green camera there on one on each side. So once these are out, they're going to look something like this. There you go. So you can see once that camera section's all opened up. But again, I have to see uh, how well this is able to hold. It does have a notch there in the left and the right side, so you can hold it in either the left hand or the right hand. Uh, but let's get this guy transformed into the Victory 2 Gundam, and then we'll continue on from there. And also, before I forget, here's our standing pilot figure for this kit. It is a little tiny figure, 100 scale, of uh, Shakti Karin. Uh, just a female character from the series, actually. So it's kind of interesting that we get a uh, different character here for our pilot figure for this kit. We get that sometimes, but it's not very often. Anyway, it's a really, really nice one, actually. I really quite like it. Definitely gonna have to paint this up. It's cool, just cool that it's something different. Also, this again just comes molded in white. I just put a little uh, black panel liner on there just to bring out the details so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. Now, as I'm transforming this, uh, this is what the core fighter looks like transformed into what is going to be the torso and head of the Gundam. And here is one thing that you'll see is one option that you have here for the, uh, that would be the left eye. Um, you have the option of using this kind of uh, scope lens, sort of. Uh, and you have two of them, so you can use that in both of the heads. But, you know, that you're only going to be using one of the heads for the Gundam, so really, don't really see the point of using uh, both of them. Really only need one, I suppose. I don't want to use this on the Gundam that I'm going to be using for the rest of this review, so I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and transform the other one and transform this back into just the core fighter mode. But I just wanted to let you guys see what that looks like with that sort of eye patch piece on there. I do also have the stickers there on the top and bottom and back of the head, little green stickers on there. 
But uh, even if you didn't want to have this in core fighter mode, maybe even just like just leaving it like this would be a cool little thing you could do. Maybe just build your own little like custom stand here underneath to just make this into like a bust would be just a really uh, cool little like thing to have just on your desk or just a little cool little project to work on. Just a 1-100 scale uh, V2 Gundam bust and you could uh, maybe make it more use than just having it just flying around in its core fighter mode if you're someone like me who doesn't really care for core fighters. So here we are. Here is our kit transformed into the V2 Gundam. Uh, I gotta say the transformation like putting it together is really not too difficult so that's good but uh, once you have it transformed uh, it was difficult to just get it to just stand here and look like this which is uh, still not even as good as I would have liked to have hoped but it's just a very simple standing pose like this was not easy to do and that's very discouraging from making me want to even try to get into any other other poses I am, of course, going to try and do my best and try to avoid getting too frustrated, but I have a feeling that's not going to be too too much of a veil. Uh, the kit looks good. I mean, personally, there's certain parts of it, I think it looks a little bit too boxy there in the chest, uh, but that's just the, the design thing. It just depends on how you look at it. That's just how the V2 is. You just have to look at it from an angle that uh, makes it look a little less like that. Anyway, uh, otherwise you have a lot of really cool details here. Uh, actually, not a whole lot of surface detail on the kit, but one thing that we have is uh, it's very similar to like the Hyakushiki 2.0 and some of the more recent Master Grades. We have a lot of little bits of the gray uh, inner, armor, inner frame kind of poking through the armor, so we have just these little holes here on the sides of the legs, here in the shoulders, these little holes here in the front and on the top of the shoulders, little bits of the gray inner frame poking through here on the arm, the shoulder part, this red part here. Uh, so that's really cool to see all of that and all of that stuff uh, poking out there. So I'm gonna pretty much skip the articulation for this kit. I really don't want to even try to get into showing you guys about the articulation for it. Essentially it's gonna I mean, it has a, the full inner frame there, of course, obviously it's quite different from most normal master grades, uh, but it's going to do, you know, the same kind of stuff any normal articulation from ever, uh, master grade is going to do. It has the double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, uh, the ankles are pretty okay, the uh, waist section is obviously not going to move at all because of the transformation. Uh, the head movement is fine, the arms are going to move pretty much like normal, the shoulder joint where the arms connect into the torso is pretty much going to be very very limited there but the arms rotate at the top uh, the wrist is just on ball joints uh, one uh, there's a couple points though that are going to be very very difficult though and the first part is what I already mentioned about the arm coming apart at the top part uh, the part that connects into the uh, body and then the lower half of the upper arm that part keeps coming apart every time I try to move the arm. Very, very annoying because it's hard to press back in. It's not like you can just like press it back in very easily. You kind of have to hold the parts in just the right way. The other point of articulation that's going to be very, very detrimental to this kit if you want to do any sort of dynamic pose is that the hips, the legs connect just straight onto a ball joint. There's no rotation at the top of the hips or anything so you're not able to move the legs out at any wide angle. You're not able to rotate uh, that part at the top of the hips. It's similar to like old HDs or even old 1100 scale non-grade kits where like the leg is just a, uh, a ball joint just snaps onto that uh, ball joint there in the waist, uh, in the hips, and that's pretty much it. You're pretty much then done with any sort of movement for it. So. Uh, that is going to make doing any sort of dynamic pose with this kit very, very difficult. Now, in terms of these beam weapons, the beam shield it holds it pretty much fine, except, like I said, it's hard to get the arm posed in a good way because anytime you try to move the arm, that part comes apart in the upper arm. Beam saber handle. Uh, if I pointed out before, the beam saber handle has a notch in it. However, the handpiece has no male end of that notch. There's nothing that that notch actually plugs into. So the beam saber handle, it's 
barely able to hold this. It was very tough. Basically, what's holding that in is just that the beam saber handle barely fits in the space between the fingers and the thumb, and that's pretty much what's holding it there. There's nothing else, so it's going to be very, very difficult to hold that. I tested it with the beam fan first, because if it can hold the beam fan, then it can hold the, just the regular beam saber. And then for the rifle here, it's going to basically be the same thing. There's nothing really holding the rifle onto the hand, any sort of like peg system that we would expect from any other normal uh, modern high grade. It's basically just the fact that the finger, and they actually have like, it's interesting, there's like a little piece behind the finger that's there to sort of make a gap uh, that's like just big enough to hold the handle there between the finger and the thumb, so that's basically what's holding the rifle in the hand there. Not the most secure connection. And that brings me to a point that I discovered that I think is worthwhile to point out, that if you look closely at all the pictures of the kit in the manual and on the box art, and I, I'm not looking online, I'd have, I'd have to go back and see, look at some photos of like this kit when before it was released on display at some hobby shows and stuff like that, but at least just in the promotional photos that come with the kit on the box, in the manual, Number one, you don't see any pictures of the kit holding a beam rifle or the beam fan at all. You do have one picture of it holding the rifle and it doesn't really look that good. Uh, and you don't see any picture of the kit like in any sort of dynamic pose on an action base. So like they didn't even try to like fake it to make it look like you could do a pose like that. It just didn't even bother trying to show any pose like that. So this is a kit that's I this feels I mean, this feels like more than probably more than any other Gundam kit that I've built, and i built the V-Dash as well, which is very good, very similar, I guess. Um, this is a kit for, like, if you're really seriously into modeling, because this is the kind of kit that when you're building this, uh, whether you want to go for the flyers or you want to build a Gundam like this, is going to be the kind of thing that uh, you're going to want to have an idea for a certain pose, and you're going to build it and make it in that pose so that you're never able to move it again. So like you're going to have to mod parts, you're going to have to basically pin things in place and or glue things into place to achieve a certain pose that you want to go for if you want to have some sort of dynamic pose. Otherwise, I think basically what this kit was made for uh, would be to, or what it's really able to do just out of box is really just stand there and look good. Now I stuttered there for a minute when I said what, or when I wanted to say what I think this kit was made for, because I was going to say like that it seems like it was made for just standing there and looking good, but that's not actually what it is. What it seems like is what it was made for. It seems like it was made to transform into the uh, top fighter and the bottom fighter. And that's really disappointing because I think if you took a poll of maybe everyone who uh, wanted this kit and maybe everyone who did buy this kit, which form they want, I think the vast majority would say that they prefer it in its Gundam form. So it's kind of unfortunate that the Gundam form suffers so much from having all these gimmicks built in for this transformation that the majority of people aren't really ever going to care for that transformation at all. So. It's kind of the thing, uh, it's just unfortunate on Bandai's part, it's kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. If they didn't make that transformation, of course people would complain, like, oh, uh, it's a kid that's supposed to transform, and they didn't make it uh, to be able to transform, that's too bad, but now we do have it, it is able, trans it is able, is able to transform. Uh, the, Gundam the Gundam form suffers quite a bit from that, I think, so, you know, it's kind of, and I was just between a rock and a hard place there to use one more metaphor. But, um, so that's really unfortunate. Again, I think pretty much what you're going to have to do with this kit is just accept that it's just going to have to stand there and look good and it's going to look like a really nice Verka kit. Or you're going to have to do some heavy modification and basically fix it into a certain pose if you want it into basically something more dynamic or being able to use the weapons a little bit better or some sort of uh, action scene or diorama you could do with the, with the, using the different flyers and stuff would be cool to make some sort of scene with that. Yeah, about the option parts. So we had the wing of light effect parts out and it's clear, you can see inside there, you can see where those uh, effect parts are going to uh, clip into place inside the backpack. 
As for an assault and or buster uh, kind of option parts set for this, we haven't got any sort of announcement for that yet. I was really hoping, like before this kit was released and when like it was announced, I was really, really hoping that there was going to be an announcement for like a P-Bandai parts set of like um, a web, uh, parts to make this into the V2 Assault Buster Gundam or maybe they'll release two sets, a set for the buster parts and a set for the assault parts. You could buy either or, mix and match, or whatever you want. At this point now, I kind of I don't really want that because I don't really want to do anything more with this kit at this point. Uh, it would be cool to paint it up. I guess, I don't know. It would be cool to have, that, have those parts, but at this point, I am sure I don't even want to try to put this into any sort of pose. It'd be cool to just paint it up and just have it just standing there and looking nice. But uh, to try to get like this adding more stuff onto this, adding the like the assault buster parts onto this just seems like it would be kind of even more of a headache, more work uh, for that, which, you know, more work is not a bad thing, that's all part of the fun, but uh, it just seems like it'd be quite a headache. Now, do I think that's really going to happen? I don't know. It seems like they've left that possibility open. To be honest, a lot of these parts uh, which would be changed would be the front skirts, back skirts, shoulders, uh, places like that. Those seem like they're set up in a way that would allow uh, those parts to be added. Now, I haven't looked at them too terribly closely, but just it's uh, from the construction and just the way some parts uh, are designed and uh, some weird like looking attachment points and things like that inside some parts and that aren't used. It looks like it's designed in a way that they could release that. I think maybe Bandai's waiting a little bit to, just to see how the sales of this kit go uh, to see if they really want to go into production of making those parts. That would be my guess, uh, but yeah, we really don't know at this point and unless we ever get that, we're maybe going to never know unless someone has the inside track which I'd be interested to know if someone does know that. So that's going to be pretty much it for this review. Uh, sorry that I skipped the articulation and didn't really go into too much details or um, about some of the poses and things like that. But anyway, it's a really nice looking kit uh, on the surface. Working with it is very difficult. Um, it's not the worst thing that I've ever worked with, although it maybe would be pretty close to be honest, sadly. Uh, but it is just very difficult to work with, so that's just something you're going to have to keep in mind. It's it's the kind of thing that, you know, if you have that in mind and you're okay with that going into it and you, and you have an idea of what you're getting into, then you'll like the kit because you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, that's kind of the purpose of this review, I guess, is to show you guys that. So if you liked the look of this, but now after watching the review you think, oh man, that's just more work than I really want to do for that kit, then... Uh, hopefully I saved you some some money and saved you a headache there. Uh, if you guys are still into this, then by all means go for it. It's a really nice looking kit. We have all these beautiful water slides to put on. Uh, you could definitely make something nice out of it. So thank you guys for watching. And just a reminder, video number 500 will be coming up soon where I'll have a very special announcement for the next big contest. So see you guys there.